Hey everyone, I'm back with another LEGO Overwatch set review. This one is Bastion, the Omnic, or you can just call him a robot. I've already reviewed a Bastion official set from LEGO previously. This one here is significantly larger. The other one was the relatively limited edition Blizzard exclusive, only available from the Blizzard web store version, which had a, a different skin or a different color scheme. And it was done to a completely different scale. This thing is huge and not in scale at all, not even a little bit, to any of the other sets from the theme. For example, this is kind of standard scale that's been established. Here's a minifigure. No, no. <laughs> See, that doesn't work out at all. This is much closer to actual minifig scale. Uh, but that's okay. They're allowed to do things that are not minifig scale. Lego does a lot of things that are not minifig scale. And I can tell you that this, to me, as a, a person who has not played the game a lot, this looks perfect, just on first impression. And it looks pretty perfect after staring at pictures of this thing on Google Images and looking at gameplay videos and, and such for quite some time in research for this video. It still looks really good to me. And the build was surprisingly easy. It went together much more quickly than I expected. set has 600 pieces and uh, you do mirror some things. Some things are, are built multiple times, which makes everything go much more quickly if you do multiple builds simultaneously. It doesn't look half bad around the back. It doesn't look half bad just in general on display. It has a modest number of stickers. I think the right number of stickers. They are certainly stickers that you can leave off if you don't want to see them. Most of the major color that's here comes from actual pieces, including the beautiful, beautiful sand green, which accents really well against the, the plain, regular, standard orange. And because this is a thing that is intended to move around, let's check out the articulation. The head moves about pretty smoothly turns side to side and angles up and down. Has a respectable range there. It's not able to tilt from side to side, but I think that's okay. The, the face, as it were, looks good, looks pretty proper, looks well proportioned. Here you have anti-studs, underside of a, a plate piece. Here you have studs, you know, top side of a plate piece. I don't mind that so much. I actually usually hate the look of the undersides of plates, but here I kind of I kind of like that little bit of texture that's on this side compared to the standard studded look. But you may have noticed that there's something built in here. Yeah, it's a, it's a light brick. And uh, yeah, you push that from the back and it lights up. That's cool. If only they had a way to, to make it stay lit like that. Of course, they don't want people to drain out their batteries by just you know accidentally leaving it on and putting it in a room where they'll forget about it for a while and then you know, drains out the batteries. It's it's difficult to change the batteries on these things, unfortunately. As long as you don't override this and accidentally leave it on for days and days and probably weeks, it'll last for years and years of just occasional use. It looks great, though. What about this arm here? What can we do with this arm? Well, let's see, you've got a shoulder joint. You can go up and, oh, you can rotate all around. Uh, you can bring it in and out a bit. That's good. And then you have a ball joint for the elbow, which doesn't doesn't have the full range of motion you typically expect for for a ball joint, but for an elbow, it's pretty good. It lets you get a little bit of, of maneuvering in there, twisting side to side. So you're not able to fully turn this across the body, but you know it's it's okay. It's it's not bad. I do wish that you could get a little bit more angling in and out. This up here is just you know just a little bit of flexibility. There's actually a reason for that. I'll get to that later, but. Yeah, this, this, is, this is okay. Before I get to the other arm, let's go ahead and see what's on this hand. It's a wee little bird who is actually named. It's called Ganymede. And I think it's an adorable little build for the thing. It looks very nice. It's proportioned pretty well. A print for the eyes would have been nice, but I'm okay with just this here as it's done. I think that if you're not going to have a print, just plain black is probably the the correct choice for this. Yeah, it's just a nice little thing and it's it's on his thumb right now. They've specifically put a spot, a jumper there for it to attach to that spot. You can also attach it to his shoulders and there are just some kind of iconic poses and and, and uh, 
positions for this that, that relates to. This arm over here is the same as the other one, except it's an actual arm. Uh, it doesn't have an SMG built into it, and it actually has a hand that can be rotated around. Very nice. Three fingers on it. Uh, medium silver ingots used here. Ball joints gives you as much range of motion as you could ask for, for something so small, so compact. And the ability to rotate the wrist is a big plus. Huge plus. Very, very good. Being able to display the fingers like that, it's very uncommon for LEGO. Super uncommon. So nice to see in such a small build. It works well. And then you may have seen me kind of holding the body a little bit. Of, you may have noticed that there's a little bit of a little bit of movement at the, at the center. I was trying not to show that until I got here, but yeah. Full waist articulation is done with actually a ball joint built into there, which makes it nice and smooth, gives it a little bit of friction, but it doesn't have ratcheting. You know, like uh, some other joint options would have. And it's not free spinning. So where you put it, it's going to stay. It doesn't want to, to change beyond that. So that's always nice to see. Waist articulation, good thing. And then what about the legs? What can we do with these legs? Can we put this into a simulated walking pose? So you've got this ability here, forward and back, with some range on it. The... The ankles are able to move forward and back also, and also rotate in and out to give you a little more, a little more stability. I mean, these are already fairly long and and wide, so they're they're fairly stable. You can angle this side to side just a little bit. There's some some friction in there as well, so that if you splay the legs, which you can do quite a bit, you can still get this. I uh, think about to right, about to right there. I think you can still get it flat on the ground. And let me just see if I can get something that looks like a like a motion pose i'm not able to to angle the foot here back any further actually forward i guess you can go this way but can't go any further there it's it's limited right there but can i get it to look like it's walking can i get it to look like it's moving um does that count does that count i mean i guess it looks like he's moving a little bit or has moved i don't know you can't really get a convincing walking pose, but at least you are able to get some posing that you know introduces some dynamism to the scene, so it's not completely static. It's actually a little bit disappointing to me uh, how limiting it is, and most of that is by virtue of this piece here. So if you kind of reduce the the height of the back of the the foot there a bit, that'll give you some more range. I think there are some things that can be done to work with this, but. Uh, there are options here. They're just not as usable as I would like them to be just with the specific arrangement of, of the, the leg and ankle movements and pivots. Now, with everything squared back up, I want to try for my first time a transformation that was not possible, unfortunately, with this little guy without modifying the thing. Transformation to his sentry mode, his Gatling gun kind of a stationary weapons platform mode. So here it goes. You're supposed to move these flaps forward. You're supposed to pull these things up, whatever they're intended to be. Oops, that's not supposed to come off. I'm doing it live. I'm doing it live. Let's see if this works. Angle all that forward. Bring this up like so. This is actually going pretty well so far. All this rotates around like so this comes down there's the main weapon these rotate very smooth right there and you're supposed to pull the head out entirely oh yeah it's not held in very very tightly and that's that's pretty much it let me just check the manual off screen here real quick yeah that does look like the way they've intended for it to be and to me it looks pretty decent yeah yeah it's a shame that the head has to be removed and isn't able to just kind of fold down into the body but i mean that's that's it that's that's what this is supposed to look like this is bastion in sentry mode i mean it may not be perfect and i bet that people who play this game all the time we'll be able to look at it and kind of pick it apart you know some individual details but 
I mean, it transforms. It does m the overwhelming majority of what you want it to do. This looks pretty right, and it was smooth and didn't introduce ridiculous complexity that drove up the parts count a whole lot. It was easy to put together, easy to transform. Let me go ahead and put it back. It should be something like this. Rotate all this around, and he's already very close. Hold this up. I just have to bring the head in from from off screen, <laughs> literally and figuratively in this case. And yeah, there's that. Plop this back down. There it is. Transformation complete. Sweet. Oh yeah, I also should call attention to the inclusion of these Overwatch medallion pieces that were used. There's one on one on the back, one on the front, or <laughs> front and back, whichever way you want to look at that. But yeah, just a couple, a couple of those are included with no spares in this set. I am surprised by how few extra pieces there are. Some of the steps don't have any spares, any extras for little pieces, for little one-by-ones for which there typically are extras. So you end up with, I mean, you know, that's a fairly valuable thing. Those are nice. This in gray is nice. Uh, other than that, well, this is in the, the light yellow color that's used on, on Ganymede. But yeah, not a lot of stuff for how big the set is. If you haven't seen the build video for this set yet, you can find that on my build channel. And I will link to it at the end of this video and also in the pinned comment. If you subscribe over there on the new channel, you'll also, of course, get to see the build videos before the reviews come out. At least usually. So all in all, I think this set worked out very nicely. It went together nicely. Uh, like I said, it was, it was easier and quicker to put together than I was expecting for the size of the thing. And it just, it feels right. It looks right to me. I think that it's good to have on display. It's not really much of a a thing to play with. You can play with it, but uh, I'm actually surprised that they didn't integrate like a, a side spring-loaded shooter over here to go with the, the SMG uh, and a six-stud shooter in the end of the Gatling gun. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that that was either considered by the designer or was suggested in peer review probably multiple times <laughs> at LEGO and uh, somehow the designer was able to get this to come out without those action features, which I think is fine. Wouldn't have been bad to, to have them in there, at least the spring-loaded shooter. I don't know how it would have looked with the six-stud shooter there, but I am happy with this thing, how it is. Ganymede is a really nice small build. They're doing this thing with the alternate art on the other side for these Overwatch sets, which I personally find cool. A lot of people hate some because it's different, some because they just don't like the style, but I, I like it. Uh, I wish they would go with this only <laughs> instead, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. And the value for this set feels good to me. Uh, the price to part ratio is, is good, unquestionably. And I feel like the price to volume of stuff ratio is also pretty good. If you see this box in person, don't look at this side if you're looking at, or if you're trying to think of or figure out how big it's going to be in person. Let me just do this. It's, it's actually not as far off as I expected. Huh. It's definitely not as far off as I expected, but a better reference would be this side of the box where you almost get to see it in its actual real size. So that, that should help you. It's a little bit bigger than it appears on the, the main view of the box. Overall, very satisfied with this thing. I couldn't ask for much more from it, to be honest. So, yeah, good on LEGO. And... Yeah, I hope they'll do more things like this at this scale in, in the future, because it's cool stuff, even if it doesn't work with the minifigures. They should have included a minifigure, though. A minifigure version of Bastion, just like with regular minifigure legs, or could they have used... Nah, I'm thinking, could they have used the, the mall legs? Nah, those wouldn't, wouldn't have worked. But even just regular ones with some print, and then a one-by-one one brick. <laughs> Maybe with a single print on it or a single sticker on it to use as a head just to stick onto a regular minifigure. I don't know. It's just wishful thinking. Would have been a cool inclusion. But for what this is, 
I feel like I got what I paid for and I'm happy with it. So there you go. That's it for my look at this one. Thank you for watching. Check out the build video if you haven't yet already, and I'll talk to you again soon.